Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, The Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing our channel and also go to the playlist section to check the various playlists on already existing videos. Now in today's session, we are going to talk about the concepts related to regional imbalances, part of regional geography that we are discussing. So we will be talking about various concepts, population resource classification as well as we'll be looking into the developing developed debate of the world and also related concepts factors and several other topics in today's session but before we go ahead don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well So now let's learn about the concept of regional imbalances, its various causes and consequences in today's session. Now before we go into the concepts of imbalances, there are two words that we need to understand and I'm sure you must have gone through these words earlier as well. These words are disparity and inequality. These are very common usage word, common terms. We often use them in terms of socio-economic interpretations of reality. So these are two interdependent terminologies but yet they are very distinct, right? So what is important here to understand is that what is this disparity and what is this inequality? Are they both same or what is the line of difference? So we look into disparity. It simply means being not in a pair, which is despair. That is common line for differences or lacking parity of some kind. That is a general word disparity, right? But when we say inequality, it is essentially implying a state of being unfair or something related to injustice. So inequality is mostly related to cultural attributes, human attributes, anthropogenic reasoning. So when we say these words, there is a common picture. I'm sure you must have seen this as well. This says that what is the difference between reality, equality, equity and justice? And why are we talking about it? Because this is related to the topic of discussion today. That is regional imbalances. So if you see clearly that reality is this drastic difference, then equality is giving them equal shares, but still they are not equal because contextually they need to be given the amount of resources that's what we say is the concept of equity right so equity is very important and if you want to give justice remember the hurdle has to be removed at the end of the line so these are certain words which are commonly used to describe the spatial and socio-economic dimensions of regional imbalances so when we go into regional imbalances the common word that comes always is regional disparity it means regions are non-uniform they are uniquenesses Remember, regional concept is about uniquenesses, pockets of uniquenesses. It means one region is unique, the other is unique, right? And they may not be similar. They may be despair, right? So that's where in both the countries, that is developing and developed countries of the world, we keep talking about these disparities, right? So if you observe this clear line of thought that one is rich, one is poor. So this kind of disparity is economic disparity and also social disparity many times. So let's look into these concepts related to imbalances of development or many times it's also called imbalance or disparity related to development right so when we apply this concept in the regional aspect it becomes regional disparity or regional imbalance so for example in India if we talk about remember being socially diverse and geographically diverse as well we have a vast country and what happens we are facing serious regional imbalance issues as well why because one reason is that resources are not uniformly distributed and also the population concentration is somewhere more dense and somewhere less dense it means there is a disparity which is existing in India and because of this disparity what we have is in long term the imbalance between the population and resource distribution so in further knowledge if you want to gain it's about the state of disequilibrium that we are talking about it's not balanced it's disequilibrium not at equilibrium not at balance the per capita income the population resource relationship all these terminologies that we often use to describe this disequilibrium is very common in regional geography so to understand it more in a very theoretical manner there is a scholar called Eckerman and he was an American scholar American geographer who in 1970s tried to classify regions of the world on the basis of population and resources 
right so these criteria used in this particular classification of the world regions is population factor resource factor technology factor these three factor and then using these three factor he classified the world into five pockets that is five fold classification of population resource region of Ackerman so let's look into it one by one the United States of America types basically the countries which fall in the type of US type where you have North America Australia New Zealand and erstwhile Soviet Union they have same level of resource and population relationship same level of technological development almost then what we observe is European type or Russian type right one sixth live in technology resource areas according to this classification most of Europe and Japan fall under this category according to Ackerman's classification then what we have is Egyptian type of classification which is very interesting and important because here technology deficiency is there and high population resource ratios are there it means what population is very high and alongside resource it means per capita resource availability is low in these areas so India Pakistan China all these countries with heavy population bases we fall under this category itself right and we have several problems related to population explosion then what we observe is Brazilian type and it is also one of the very important types where population or human resource is not enough sometimes to use the given natural resources so they are also dependent upon technology from outside to use their own resources right that is another problematic area then what we observe is the arctic desert type which is completely technologically deficient also we have little food in those areas and also population is on lower side so this talks about the regional disparity or regional imbalances existing on the world map population resource relationship in terms of Ackerman's classification of these regions now if you go further the regional imbalance if you want to understand in a simple line it is a condition right and it is a condition when economy fails to extend the benefits to equally to all regions right so it is concentrated in some areas and it is existing in some other areas in a very fruitful manner for example, remember Green Revolution and its impact in India, right? What happened in Indian? Some states got the benefit and some did not because of several factors that we keep talking about, isn't it? So regional imbalance has largely two dimensions in regional geography when we study. The first dimension is the spatial dimension, the locational aspect, the aerial aspect, the regional aspect right so we observe for example in USA northeastern areas of USA are more developed than the many other parts of USA then inter-regional imbalance we observe clearly in India eastern and western India northern and southern India right then intra-regional within the region also you have variations we have imbalances of social and economic concepts so Vidharva and western Maharashtra in a same state of Maharashtra you look at the developmental levels then you talk about coastal Andhra Simandra and Telangana this debate had been happening for a long time so this is very common that spatial dimensions of this particular disparity or imbalance exists and the second is what we keep talking about is socio-economic dimension and what is it it's talking about classes of people high class low class middle class lower middle class and several other classes being created on the criteria of social and economic orders so what we observe this kind of hierarchy existing now this leads to a lot of imbalances lot of disparities and further many times inequalities that we keep talking about right so when we observe types of regional imbalances on the world map so you can see that developed quasi developed underdeveloped are the three major broad categories on these maps of the world if you observe carefully so you have deep blue a little lighter blue then you have yellow category and then you have clear cut red categories so largely four if you observe so developed world a little of transitioning world developed and developing in betweenness and then clear cut developing world and then red ones are the third world countries that we say underdeveloped regions of the world isn't it then what you observe is the scales of this disparity also varies remember geography is also not just about space it's also about scaling of these factors isn't it so global disparity interstate intrastate and then local rural urban disparity these are the levels of disparity that we are talking about when we say regional imbalances it's not just about one imbalance multi-scaled imbalances are there which needs to be taken care with our policies and planning isn't it so when we say classification of these factors which cause these imbalances so the first way to classify is the nature of these factors 
So you can say some are physical in nature and some are non-physical in nature. For example, physical factors like mostly you'll see geographical factors of physical geography, climatological factor, geomorphological factor, terrain and topography, soil, hydrology, vegetation and forest, location, accessibility, natural resource endowment present in a given area, isn't it? So these are physical. Now non-physical factors are the historical factors, demographic factors, economic factors, levels of industrialization, agrarian development and others, then socio-cultural factors, political and dynamic factors. Now these are non-physical factors, isn't it? So when we observe this kind of factorization can be done and we can keep talking about all these factors when we are writing answers on a particular topic where factors of regional imbalances we have to discuss. In simple ways, you can also draw this kind of flow diagram and explain the clubs of these factors. So look here, historical factors, for example, population and centers of trade, colonialism, partition and several other topics that we keep talking in context of India. So these had an impact on particular region specific areas and then social factors, population, total fertility rate, gender inequality, sex ratio, education and literacy in a given area, then political factors, for example, political stability and instability, communal harmony and disharmony, conflicts, land reforms. These are all political factors or many times we talk about geopolitical factors. In present context, the Ukrainian crisis, Ukraine-Russia war is part of the geopolitical crisis, isn't it? Then we say geographical factors, which are purely on the basis of locational advantage. So some places have locational advantages, right? Coastal areas, mineral belts, isn't it? So difficult terrain, natural resources and several other things related to north and south divide that we keep talking about. These are geographical influences, geographical factors on the regional imbalance. And then you have the economic factors and very important factors. So industrialization, per capita income, impacts of green revolution and other revolutions, then connectivity and infrastructure, and now IT revolution, information technology has taken over the world. So these are part of the factors that lead to balance or imbalance. So concentration of these factors would tell us that the region would be balanced or it will be imbalanced in terms of these factors. So we observe that there are certain consequences of these regional imbalances. So what are the consequences? The first is the disputes and agitations between states. For example, Simandra, Telangana, UP and Uttarakhand, Jharkhand and Bihar, we have been talking and looking into these states and their divisions many times, right? Then we observe migration of people. Now remember, most of the migration happen from backward areas to the areas where all the developmental activities are concentrated. So this imbalance leads to lot of migration. And remember, we talked about in theories of migration in population geography, that areas which are receiving migration have next level problems and areas which are going out there also at source, there are a lot of problems. So migration is considered having a lot of issues related to the change in economy and social structure at both origins and destinations as well. So we observe the social unrest. For example, many places we say red corridor, naxalism, insurgency developing due to the disparities and extreme level of inequalities in the society. Then what we observe is pollution problems because of the concentration of development at a particular place, especially industrial development. Then what we observe is the next consequence is housing and water issues that we are facing in today's world. Remember, there was a news that Chennai had already lost on groundwater. Right, it's a big news. So cities like Mumbai, New Delhi, Chennai, Hyderabad are facing the problems of overpopulation and that is because of the imbalance of development in their states. Then what we observe is further frustration among unemployed youth. Now remember, we are a young country. We're talking about reaping the youth dividend now. But if this youth is not channelized, if they're not getting jobs, if they're not getting education, then there is a frustration that develops and this leads to chaos in the society. Then further we say underdeveloped infrastructure. Infrastructural development is a facility. It's a tool for facilitating better quality of life. If our infrastructure is not good, then obviously the access and also the affordability to resources will be a big problem. So remember proper power, proper housing, safe drinking water, sanitation. Remember, we have several yojanas of the government facilitating these things, 
right? In order to create a better quality of life, we must have a developed infrastructure. But because of imbalances, we find underdevelopment in infrastructure, right? Then what we observe is aggregation of the imbalance at a particular place. So some places are prospering very heavily, like big cities, while rural countryside in many areas are not even getting two meals. This is the extreme level of imbalance that we are talking about. So this is something which happens in long run as a consequence, right? So what we observe? Examples of Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad and several such big cities and metropolitan cities and new cities, smart cities. These cities are the hub of all the facilities. But what about rest of their cities? The second and third and fourth tier cities, the urban areas, right, which are now developing after coming from rural backgrounds, right. So we observe they're still lacking behind. These imbalances are very common to look into India in terms of if we want examples from developing nations, isn't it? So there is a developed and developing divide clear cut that we observe. Problems of developed countries and problems of underdeveloped countries are clear cut on the basis of their socio-economic conditions apart from the other factors. For example, geographical factors are also different, cultural factors are different, but most important that we always talk about in regional geography is the socio-economic factor, which is ruling the world right now. So we have sustainable development goals to achieve for the world. So that is our agenda 2030. So now, when we have learnt about the various aspects of regional imbalances, factors, consequences in today's session, in the next session, we'll be talking about many other theories of regional development, imbalances and several other topics. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep learning and sharing. Best wishes to all of you.